Are AMD CPUs actually bad for gaming, or is this AM dip entirely fabricated? Let's find out. Okay, so recently I've been seeing more and more comments about something called quote unquote AM dip, where I guess the idea is apparently that AMD CPUs have some sort of fundamental flaw in the CPU design themselves, having to do with having to go across the infinity fabric to talk to the IO die or various different interpretations of that sort of an issue, which is leading to it having some pretty big frame drops in games that aren't showing up in mainstream reviews and therefore AMD CPUs shouldn't be purchased for online competitive gaming. Now, I've been seeing these comments popping up in places like Reddit and YouTube threads, and I'm not entirely sure where this originated, and I've seen no actual proof or testing of this personally, and I do want to say, first of all, secondhand accounts on places like Reddit should definitely be taken with a grain of salt, but let's go ahead and actually prove whether or not this issue really exists by doing some real testing. So, in today's video, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking a 7800X 3D versus a 12900K, both with an RTX 4090 on Windows 11, and the only real difference between these two systems is one is using dual channel 6000 megahertz DDR5 CL30, and the other one is using CL3260 400 megahertz DDR5 on that Intel platform. So not exactly identical, but I think the entire point of this is to prove whether or not AMD has an architectural fundamental issue. So really, I think you could entirely mismatch the specs and we should still be able to come to the same conclusion. So let's find out. And taking a look at our first game here, Call of Duty Warzone at 4K using the extreme preset and DLSS quality and a 225 FPS lock, as this is a very realistic scenario for this game. And as you'll notice, yes, overall the 7800X 3D is significantly faster than the 12900K, but that's to be expected, it's a generation newer. But honestly, that's pretty irrelevant. What we're trying to take a look at here is the difference between the average and the 0.1% lows to see which CPU has a tighter gap between the two, making it theoretically the more consistent CPU for online competitive gaming. And taking a look, actually the 7800X 3D in this game is faring a little bit better with an 81% difference between the average and 0.1% lows, whereas the 12900K has a 106% difference between its average and 0.1% lows. But one game doesn't tell the full story. Let's take a look at another one. This time we're taking a look at the finals 4K medium settings and DLSS quality. And here it's a little bit of the opposite. Yes, the 7800X 3D is a little bit faster, but actually with an 84% difference between its average and 0.1% versus the 12900K's 55% difference between the average in 0.1% lows, it looks like Intel is a more consistent performer in this game. But next, taking a look at Fortnite DirectX 12 4K medium settings, DLSS quality, and a 200 FPS lock. By the way, the finals was also locked at 225 FPS. We can see here that the AMD CPU is slightly more consistent, getting a 95% difference between average and 0.1%, and the 12900K has a 104% difference between its average and 0.1% lows. Then taking a look at Apex Legends 4K Ultra settings, this time with a 138 FPS lock to see if it would change anything. And here we're seeing that the AMD CPU had a 28% difference between its average and 0.1% lows, whereas the 12900K had a 41% difference between its average and 0.1% lows. And if we go ahead and we take a look at the four game average here, guys, what you're gonna notice is, well, overall the 7800X 3D is basically just as consistent, if not slightly more consistent than the 12900K. I mean, taking a look at the average versus the min FPS, it's a 17% difference on AMD versus 21% on the 12900K. And of course, we do want those numbers to be lower, showing a more consistent result. Then taking a look at the average versus the 1%, 38% difference on AMD, 40% on Intel. And then on the average versus the 0.1%, overall it's 73% versus 76% on the 12900K. So looking at those results, guys, sure we could go ahead and include more and more and more and more games, and maybe the results would change slightly in favor of 
AMD or Intel. But I think the argument here was that AMD had, again, a fundamental flaw that specifically would make it really bad in games like Battle Royales and other online competitive shooters, which is exactly what we took a look at today. And out of the four results, there was only one scenario where AMD was actually a little bit worse than what Intel was getting, whereas the rest of the results pointed towards AMD actually being more consistent on their X3D CPUs. So I think at this point, there's really no reason for us to investigate this any further. And in my opinion, I think this AM dip that's being thrown around online is probably entirely fabricated and or whoever's seeing it is just basically losing their minds because I just don't see how this could be the case. Now, there is a potential for maybe there's more people running AMD systems using some settings that can lead to some dips and other issues. And here's some other things that could potentially be causing it. I mean, for example, we have stuff like, well, actually, if you overclock X3D CPUs, they become very unstable very quickly. And I don't recommend overclocking them or even undervolting them at all whatsoever. Not even the tiniest amount. Honestly, guys, I love overclocking but just do not do it on the X3D CPUs. I'm begging you, don't do it. It's a terrible idea. If you're doing it right now, please undo it. Like honestly, they are so close to the edge as it is, don't do it. And then the other thing could be bad F clock slash memory clock configuration as you do want to run these CPUs in kind of a one to one type of situation here with the memory itself. There's a lot of information on that. I'll try and link you guys in the description below. So if your memory clocks and your F clock are out of sync wildly, that can actually cause some problems as well. And I do believe there's probably a lot of people out there who are out of sync, especially if you're running over 6,000 megahertz RAM. And then the final thing is, well, honestly, it could just be that you're using RAM that's maybe not on your motherboard QBL list, or maybe it just doesn't have DOCP whatsoever, and you're using Intel XMP on an AMD platform. Now, normally that's not too much of an issue, but I have personally run across some problems where if you use Intel XMP, and you try and use it on an AMD platform, you're gonna get horrendous memory timings, leading to some pretty poor performance in certain situations. So please do go ahead and take a look maybe at your motherboard QVL list and try and buy memory that's on there if you can, but at the very least, I'd maybe look for kits that do have DOCP because if you're not willing to manually punch in the timings and seriously test them for hours and hours on end, I just don't think it's a good idea to buy non-QVL Intel XMP kits for AMD platform. So those are some things that I think could be leading people to believe AMD is less stable when in reality, if you do set it up as it's intended to be used, as I showed today, that certainly should not be the case. But of course, that's just what I think. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Do you think that AM dip is real or do you think it's entirely fabricated? And if so, why do you think that is? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.